Hi YouTube! Today I will continue my series about GNU slash Linux and PCI, PCI Express, with a video how to write a Linux kernel module for PCI, PCI Express devices. And the overall goal for this video is to um, create a Linux driver for this PCI to parallel port card here. And in today's video I will just create a simple kernel module to enable the card and read some of its configuration space registers from kernel space. But in my next video we will map its I.O. space and read and write to the I.O. space. Okay, and because this is an old PCI card and my laptop don't have a PCI bus, only a PCI Express bus available and of course no slots available, I am using this old PC here because um, it has a PCI Express and a PCI bus built into it and if we look at this picture you can see down here I have plugged in my PCI card. Okay, so let's start. So I've already made a series of videos about how to program Linux kernel modules and I have cloned the repository from GitHub. It's called Linux Driver Tutorial and if we look into it we can see all the various Linux kernel modules I've already made and I will use this simple hello world um, Linux kernel module as a template for today's video so I don't have to um, write everything from scratch. So now I will just copy this folder and I will create a new folder I will call PCI Pairport and I will change into this directory here. So here you can see this my module.c is the source file for our Linux kernel module and here is a make file to compile and build it. And now I will rename it from my module.c to pairport.c. And of course I have to change the file name in the make file as well. Okay. And now I will open it up. Oh. Okay, I made a mistake up here. This should be PCI paraport.c. Okay. Okay, so this is just a template for a simple Hello World Linux kernel module, and I will adjust it to our needs. So the first thing I have to do is I have to include Linux slash PCI.h, which gives us all the functions to access the PCI bus. And here I will change, change the description to um, a simple Linux kernel module for a PCI to parallel port adapter. Okay, so because we want to access this um, parallel port card here, we have to specify the vendor and the device ID of it. So I will create two defines here for the vendor and for the device ID. Okay, and let's look it up. I will just execute lspci and then lspci with the minus n option, which will give us the, all the vendor and device um, IDs as numeric numbers because normally it will look them up and display what devices we have. So here on bus number 4, device number 9, function number 0, we have our PCI port parallel adapter and down here we can see for 590 the vendor ID is 907010 and the device ID is 9805. So I will just copy these two numbers here and paste them in here. Okay, and of course they are hexadecimal, so I have to add this suffix here, oh, this prefix here, sorry. Okay, and here I will 
um, as a variable from the type static struct PCI device and this is our pointer to our PCI device or the pointer to, to the struct over which we can access the PCI device. Okay, so now let's go to the initialization module here or a function here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to check if um, um, PCI device um, with render and device ID is available because you know PCI cards are pluggable so you can remove a card and we can only use a driver if the card is plugged. So here I will use the function PCI get um, device and as an argument it needs the vendor ID, the device ID and pointer to our PCI device um, to our PCI device struct so to our access point to the PCI device and if this pointer is now there is no such device available um, PCI to our port adapter is not available and I will return the minus one here but um, if it is available we can now enable the device and for this we will use the, fu the function um, PCI enable device and the only argument it, ne it needs is the pointer to our PCI dev struct here. Okay and if this value is um, is lesser than zero or smaller than zero um, we couldn't enable the device and I will print this out could not enable the device okay but if we came to this line down here we have found a device with the desired render and device ID and we have enabled it so now we can access its configuration space And I know it's not very creative for me, but I will just um, <laughs> read back the vendor and the device ID here. So to do so, I need the function PCI read config word because I want to read a 16-bit um, integer variable here. The first argument is our device instance pointer. The second argument is um, the offset for the vendor ID it would be zero but I will use the define PCI vendor ID because it makes the code more readable and the last thing is a pointer to where we want to store um, the result and in this case it's just the address of my value variable here. Okay so now I can just print it out. write it to the kernel slot and I will do the same for a device ID okay and that's it we have um, checked if such an, a device with our specified render and device ID is available we have enabled it and we have read some registers from the config space so now the last thing I will do is I will just modify the theory a little bit instead of by kernel I will print PCI power port exit um, unload module. Okay. So now let's try to compile our Linux kernel module.
it's an old PC, it takes some time here. Okay, and now I will change to root user to load it. And now we'll execute ins mode, but because I haven't um, added slash sbin to my path variable, I have to call it this way here. And now we'll load our compiled PCI per port curl module into the kernel. Looks good. And now let's check the kernel's log. And I will just print out the last five lines. So here we see we um, a device was found with um, the ID, render ID and the device ID. But these values look a little bit strange. Let me just double check it. Ah, okay, instead of, <laughs> yeah, I printed out decimal and not hexadecimal. So to make it a little bit more readable, I have to change it to an X here. Okay, let's build it again. Let's unload our module and reload it again. Okay, and now let's look at the kernel stock once again. Okay, here you can see now we have, now it's formatted correctly and we see our vendor ID is 9710 and our device ID is 9805. So it looks good. We, co we could successfully load it our module and access the configuration space. Okay, that's it for today. In my next video, we will access the IO space of the device. So thanks for watching and I hope I see you in my next video.